Hi guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Matt Garvey and we are here to talk about making comics today. And in today's video, I'm gonna go through how to make a banner for your artist alley table. But I'm also gonna go through the fundamentals of the stuff that you need to know before you start creating them. And I'm also gonna show you how I get mine printed as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump over to my PC and I'm gonna show you how to do that. So let's go. Okay, so before we actually start designing our Comic-Con banners for artist alley, we need to remember that, you know, 95% of the time, these banners are actually gonna be behind our tables, not by the side, not in front, they're actually gonna be behind. So this means that, you know, anything that we put within the bottom third of that banner, no one is actually gonna see. So when you're thinking about your designs for your comic banners, you need to make sure that, you know, you don't put anything valuable in this area. So no website, no your name, no Twitters, no Instagrams, no nothing, because no one is gonna see it because it's gonna be hidden by your table and your tablecloth, okay? So that's point number one. Now, the second point is, is Preferably what you want to do is you want to put your name at the top of the banner in the big chunky fonts But you also want to avoid really really skinny fonts because the whole idea of the band is so people can see you from you know A distance especially at comic-con so again you want to stay away from very skinny fonts because it's going to get lost on the image Okay, so if you don't have any fonts that you think are going to be good enough for a banner I suggest coming over to this site. This is bland, but this is a comic resource site now This is run by a guy called Nate Picos who is a comic book letterer one of the best in the business now now, some of these fonts that you'll see honey up you have to pay for but a lot of them you can actually get for free as well that's how awesome Nate is now what you want to do is you want to stay away from all the dialogue fonts and you want to stick to you know the, the sound effect fonts or the design fonts because remember you want big chunky letters for your name on your banner so what I would do is I suggest you, you know come over here have a scroll through the website find a couple that you like and then see if they're for pay or they're for free but you know maybe kick in a few quid and actually buy you know a good one because you can actually use it in your comics as well but this is a great resource and speaking of Nate I love Nate he's a great guy he actually has a book about lettering coming out at the end of this month I've pre-ordered it you should do it as well if you know if you've got any interest in you know what comic letterers do because I love process books so I've pre-ordered this and I'll put a link in the description if you want to get your hands on that book as well now the third thing we need to remember when we're setting up our banner to print and to design is we need to pick a printer before we've actually begun the design and aspects of it and the reason for this is is because the printer is going to set the dimensions of how they want that banner over so some are going to want you know the banner with bleed marks and give you the sizes some may not want bleeds and that kind of thing and if you don't know what bleeds are we've been through this before on the channel they are just the crop marks that you know printers use when you know they're chopping stuff down to be printed now the printer i use is a company called dwa print that my good lady wife found on amazon a few years ago now it's a strange way of doing it i know it's not you regularly you know find a printer online that kind of thing and i like these guys because they're very very quick very quick turnaround you know two or three Three days later I've got my banners in the past now what you want to do is if you do want to use this service I'm going to show you how to do that in a bit but the reason why I wanted to show you a printer is because they in their description show you how they want the file sent over to themselves so for these guys you know they want you know if you're going for the 80 centimeter wide banner which is what I do so it's 800 by 200 the artwork needs to go over in that format so they don't want any layers they don't want any bleeds or any crop mark it needs to be a pdf or a jpeg so now i know because i use these guys i know how i need to send that file over to them so i'm going to show you how to do it and we're going to go back over to photoshop all you can do is go up to file and new and i've already got it set up here so it's going to be 800 by 200 and i'm going to put the resolution at 300 dpi because we want this banner to look really really good um also we're going to go to cmyk now this is going to be a pretty big file because of the size of it but you know once you've done that you just click ok okay so when you press ok you're going to be met with this nice blank banner shape template and you might be watching this and thinking Matt I'm not an artist I'm not a designer I have no idea when it comes to you know actually designing a banner and I totally get what you're saying I'm a writer myself I'm neither of those other things but if you've seen any of the banners that I've done in the past what I just tend to do is I used to use an image either from my covers or from the internal pages of my comic and then I just put my name at the top of it and then voila the banner is complete so i'm just going to show you how to do that and i'll show you how simple it is and i think the important thing is to remember don't overthink it it doesn't need to be perfect no one's expecting you to be you know high design high quality you know 
fantastic. Just, you know, make sure it's unique to you and people can read, you know, your name at the top of it and the image looks okay. That's all you need to remember, okay? Now, first thing we want to do is we want to draw a line down the dead center of that banner just so we know any image that we put on, we can line it up perfectly. So we're going to add a guide onto this. Now, I've shown this on the channel before, but, you know, if you don't know how to do it, all we're going to do is we're going to go up to view and then we're going to go down to new guides and then we want to make sure it's on vertical and then we're going to type 50 in there and then we're going to press the percentage key and then if we click OK what that's done is that's drawn a guideline over our template now this is not going to appear on the art this is just a guideline that sits you know above the light line work so you can see you know where everything is so you can line stuff up okay now from here as I said all I tend to do is just to drag an image that's either a cover or an internal page from one of my comics onto the banner and it's done so I'm just going to show you how easy that is now I've got a couple of images ready now in my new banner I've used an image from Big Worms and literally all I've got is I've got a JPEG here and I've just dragged that over and that will open. Now what you'll see is it opens really, really small because obviously the banner is a lot bigger than the actual comic art. Now this is why it's important to get your art sent to you from your artist collaborators in the highest resolution possible. I tend to ask for 600 DPI because it means when I do stuff like banners, I can blow it up even though the, you know, the resolution of the banner is different. It means I'm not gonna lose any of that quality and I can blow it up and it's still gonna look pretty good. So once it's been pulled over, it doesn't fit. What you need to do is hold the shift key do not let go of that shift key whatever you do and then just hover your cursor over one of the corners and then simply drag that because if you let go of the shift key it's going to move all the you know the left right to make it fat and thin that kind of thing but if you hold the the shift key it's going to keep it all in proportion and then just keep dragging until you know that fits nicely over your banner as best as possible so i'm just going to show you and obviously the guides are there to let you know where the the dead center is there we go. And then once you've finished putting it where you kind of want it, how big you need it, just let go of the shift key. And then you can nudge it into place with the arrow key. So I'm just going to nudge it up a little bit there. And then when you press the enter key. Okay, so that's the image. And now all we need to do is add some text from name. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that my text tool is selected over here by the T. And I'm just going to click somewhere around the center of it because I can always change this up after. So I'm just going to click there. And then I'm going to type matte. There we go, that's nice and big. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm going to duplicate that for Garvey. So I'm just gonna click out of it and click back on. Then I'm going to Control J that to copy it. And then I'm just gonna move that down by moving the hold button. And then I'm gonna select my type tool again. And I'm gonna select all by Control A. And then I'm just gonna write Garvey. There we go, so that is my name in there so I can nudge these wherever I want. If I want them aligned, all I need to do is select control and click both of the layers over here on the right. And if you come up here to the top, you can align them so they're perfectly aligned. And then if I control T, I can actually make them bigger and smaller. And I can make sure that that is spot on in the middle. If I want a smaller gap in between them, I'll just click and hold the Garvey layer and then I'll just nudge that up with the arrow keys a little bit. And that's how easy it is to do. So, you know, that's what you can do. But another way you can do it is you can get a little bit more creative with regards to, you know, the images that you're putting on your banner. You know, as, as another example, you know, I've got a, a cover for Chunks issue three. I'll just drag that on there and it's just gonna place that for me. And again, you know, it's not gonna be a huge image. It's gonna be quite small because of uh, the difference in the actual size of the comic page and the banner. So again, remember, hold the shift key, Grab the top corners, make sure you're not letting go of the shift key and just dragging them down. And what I can do is, you know, I can make an image that that's a little bit off center. And again, the bottom third of it's gonna get lost, but I think that's quite a striking image to have on a banner. And I can nudge Bo's head into place. There we go. And then when it comes to the text, what I wanna make sure, cause this is gonna be off center. So if I go for the left alignment up here, I'm just gonna click there and I'm gonna write matte again. And I'm gonna select all and I'm gonna change that color to black because black stands out really well on yellow. And I'm just gonna move that down. And I'm gonna control J that. And I'm gonna select that and pull that down. And then I'm just gonna change that to Garvey, select all, Garvey. And it's covering our hair a little bit. So I'm gonna select both the layers and the move tool. 
and I'm just going to move that down a tad. So again, that's how easy it is. That's just one of the covers that I've used on one of my comics. Dragged it over to the banner, added some text, and that's a banner done. One more example I wanted to show you is if you wanted to use, you know, some internal pages of your comic. So I'm just going to get rid of those. I have a page from the cage here. So I'm just going to drag that over onto the image. And again, I'm holding the shift key. I'm going to drag that up to the size that I want it. You know, and again, you can get as funky and as creative as you as you want with your banners. But again, it doesn't look that great, you know, just using the internal page of a comic. So what I might do is, is if I change this image into a black and white image, and then I'm going to turn it back into a CMYK image, then I'm going to grab my text tool, and I'm going to get a bright yellow again. And remember, I've converted this back to a CMYK. So now the text is going to be in color. So if I type matte there again, I'm going to just move that into the middle ish. And then I'm going to control J to copy it. And I'm going to hold the shift key and just drag the next layer down. And then if I grab my text tool again and write my surname, Garvey, there we go. And then if I control T, I'll move them into the middle with the arrow keys. And guys, that's really how easy it is to design a banner, okay? You don't need to overthink it. You don't need to be, you know, designed out of this world. It just needs to be simple as long as it's got your name on. You know, if you want to add your website, you know, your Twitter handles, that kind of thing, you know, by all means, put them on there. But as long as the image is, is cool and, you know, your name is in big words, that's all you need to do. But once we get to this stage, what we want to do is we want to save two versions of it, okay? So you want to save either a Photoshop version, which obviously I'm working in, or a Clip Studio version. But what you also want to do is you want to flatten the image and save it as a PDF. Now, to do this, all you need to do is go up here to Layer, and then you want to go down to Flatten Image. So what that's going to do is that's going to make all the layers into one. So make sure you do your Photoshop save first. And then once you've done that, you know, you just go to File, and then Save As. And this is my YouTube banner. And then go to the drop down menu here and then you change it to a PDF. There we go. That's just going to save. It's going to take a couple of minutes. It's then going to ask you if you want to preserve any of the editing qualities. No, because you've got the Photoshop version or the Clip Studio version, you don't need any of that. So just untick those boxes and just click save. Quickly move my face to the other side. So once you've actually ordered your banner from Amazon, all you need to do, if you're in the UK and you're gonna use this company that I use, just send them a WeTransfer document. So, you know, go to WeTransfer, you know, wetransfer.com, put in their email address, your email address, your order number, and then attach the file, and then boom, send it over. And that's it, your banner's done and you're away. So hopefully you found that interesting, hopefully that helps. And don't forget to give us a like, share and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.